Hi, everybody. Um, we are so lucky to have Dr. Mark Heisig joining us today. He is a naturopathic doctor who specializes in applied clinical neuroscience and pain management. And he is really passionate about helping people overcome brain injuries and perform better. Um, so he's going to talk to us today a little bit about concussion and the different ways of treating it. So the cool thing that I really like about Dr. Mark is that he is, oh, hi guys, he's himself like really dedicated a lot of his life to studying this. And so he's actually the doctor that a lot of people end up seeing after they've been to all the other specialists. And so maybe you've been to a TBI clinic and you got some improvement. Maybe you went to some neurologists and you're feeling a bit better. Um, but there's still room left to improve. And what I love about Dr. Mark's approach is that he combines the best of everything. So he's not just going to talk to you about diet. He's not just going to talk to you about exercise. He's going to talk to you about it all. Um, and he's got some really advanced clinical tools that he uses in his practice. So um, I'm really excited to have him on today. So here's what I'll say um, as I'm waiting for him to join. What I want to say is you're going to hear us kind of cover the basic stuff in the beginning. And it's good review for anyone, including the doctors who are also on the call. Oh, and here's Mark. So I'm going to let him in. Um, so but what I'll say is stick with us because at the end we're going to get into the advanced techniques that Mark uses in his practice that are going to help you if you feel like you've already done everything. Um, they'll actually really help you and take you to the next level. So everybody put your hands together for Dr. Mark. You should be here. Hi, Andrew. Hi! Hi! <laughs> Hi, Doing well. How are you doing? Good. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. And you know what? A lot of people are excited. I got a couple messages before this from people saying that they have been struggling for years, and they were so happy that we were going to jump on and talk about this. So, um, cool. yeah, so thank you. I know you're busy, but it means a lot to be doing this sort of public education because I really feel like this is information that's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, um, yeah. You posted a, a graphic, and guys, go follow Dr. Mark on Instagram, go to his website, look at all the different social media platforms he posts on, because he does a lot of really good education about concussion and your options for treating it. And one thing that you said is, and you, you quoted the statistic that 50% of people throughout their lifetime will experience at least one concussion. Yeah. And yeah, so can you talk about that? I feel like that's pretty mind-blowing for most folks. Yeah, so it was, I was reading a paper, it was uh, published 2020, and kind of in, in the introduction of papers, they give you little stats and tidbits to kind of build, build the picture, um, and it was that 50% uh, of the world's, the world population, not just like the United States, but 50% yeah. of the world is going to experience some form of traumatic brain injury in their life, and there's a 70 to 90% chance that it's a concussion. Wow. So like, literally almost every other person you look at is yeah. either had a concussion or they're at risk of yeah yeah guys so like if you're at home with your family watching this it's like look to your like your husband and your kids yeah. like somebody at some point is gonna have a concussion on, probably on, on this call it's me so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so we know you're an expert you know what you're talking about so i mean this is good information like even if you personally are watching and you have you don't feel like you've had a concussion i'd actually question that stay tuned because <laughs> dr mark's going to tell you what actually causes concussions um but listening might do a lot for your loved ones you know between like any time really you know for the rest of their lives um so okay talk me through this because i think most people think if they don't play football if they don't play rugby and they don't get in like a major car accident there's no way that they could have a concussion but is that true? Yeah. Uh, no. So, so most of the research is around sports-related concussion because the idea is that, like, that that's, like, the most risk. Like, you're, you're playing football, you're playing hockey, you're playing whatever. Like, those are the people who are most often throwing themselves at risk. But, like, half of my patients, it's car accidents. I've got a woman who uh, was running to answer her phone. She still had a landline. She was running to answer her phone, tripped over her cat. Um, and hit her head on the floor and had a, had a severe TBI. Like it wasn't just oh a concussion. Yeah. And wow. so, so we've got falls, we've got motor vehicle accidents. We've got really, unfortunately, we've got domestic violence, like yeah. we've got all kinds of issues yeah. that it doesn't, I think one of the things that people need to know is it doesn't have to be a hit to the head. 
uh, an right. old idea of concussion is that you had to hit your head. And it's like, no, it's just got to be a force that's transmitted to that. So you can get hit to the body in a car accident, in a fall, right. or whatever, and, right. and sustain a concussion. Yeah. That makes sense. And guys, so like Dr. Mark and I in school actually got to hold like a human brain in our hands. Like super cool for us, maybe gross for other people. Um, but what's amazing about it is that it's actually the consistency of kind of like soft butter. If you took butter right out of the fridge in the summer and you let it sit for a minute, you know if you, if you push your finger in it, it might make a little dent. And that's the consistency of your brain. So if you're in any sort of accident where your head is rocking back and forth, that is going to push your brain against the sides of your skull, and it can cause an impact that's great enough to give you a concussion. So in your yeah, laughing, Google, you're like, yeah. you know, I was going to say, Google what the inside of a skull looks like, yeah. and it's not forgiving. There's lots of corners and pokey <laughs> <laughs> projection. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's easier than you think is what you're saying to get a concussion. And I want to check with you because I think there's this myth that um, if you don't black out or lose consciousness, you probably didn't have a concussion. And is that true? That's insanely false. Um, so, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So the idea, like, even when I was a kid growing up playing hockey, like, if you didn't black out, like, you were just being soft. Like, you you didn't actually have a concussion. And, and the reality is, is that the range in the research is 1 to 14%, but the overall number is that less than 10% of concussions actually result in a loss of consciousness wow. so that means more than 90 percent it's most of the time you took a hit or something happened and you just kind of went oh that felt weird and that was your concussion you know wow. so <laughs> so yeah. so more than 90 percent of the time you're not dealing with a loss of consciousness okay um, and i guess one thing just to backtrack a bit because it's easier than you think to get a concussion you don't have to black out but also, I don't want to instill fear because it's, it's pretty hard to get a concussion at the same time. <laughs> um, so, like, to give you an example, so, so, like, whiplash, it's, like, five Gs of force, right? right. So, like, one unit of gravity is a G, and that's right. me sitting in the chair. So, okay. for me to have whiplash, it's got to be about five Gs of force to my neck. Okay. For you to have a concussion, it's got to be 70 to 120 Gs. Okay, gotcha. On average. So, you're not going to sneeze and get a concussion. You're not going to, like... Just right. kind of shake the neck a little bit and get a concussion. Uh, most of the time, if you have a concussion, you have whiplash, but it's not always that if you have whiplash, you have a concussion. Okay, so, so yeah. So it's, it's, like easier, I, it's easier and harder to get a, get a concussion than you think. <laughs> so go to a specialist is what we're hearing. Like, yeah. don't yeah. pop it out. Like, if you got sort of like a knock to the head or to the body and you're feeling a little bit dazed or disoriented, um, go to your doctor and get evaluated because there are pretty standard guidelines that doctors use to evaluate and to determine if you've had a concussion mm -hmm. and don't leave it to chance because I want us to transition next to talking about some of the symptoms that people can get from a concussion. So what are some of the typical symptoms that people can show up with? Yeah, so the, the biggest one, so there's 22 <laughs> that we use uh, for, for diagnosis. So it's um, the SCAT-5, the Sport Concussion Assessment Tool, 5th edition that we use. Right. And there's 22, and it's like headaches, pressure in the head, dizzy, nauseous, vomiting, feeling slowed down, don't feel right is an actual symptom that we track. Um, <laughs> feeling yeah. like you're in a fog, having uh, uh, kind of trouble concentrating, trouble remembering, anxiety, yeah. depression, irritability, uh, yeah. kind of mood, mood swings. So it, it hits... The symptoms of concussion are physical, cognitive, and emotional. So it's, you can have a concussion and only walk away with anxiety. It doesn't have to be headaches. Most often, though, people deal with, uh, I think headache has got to be the number one symptom. People have sensitivity to light if they, if they have headaches usually, um, and then fatigue. So the biggest thing that people walk in is like, I feel just tired, I'm in a fog, and my head hurts, <laughs> is, is most often what I hear. And it's so interesting because I feel like for uh, many Americans, like they feel like that's normal actually to walk around like yeah. that. And so they might <laughs> go to the doctor. Um, but guys, like if you've got a loved one who had some type of impact to their body or their brain um, and they're having these symptoms, encourage them to go see a doctor because it could, it really could be related. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk for a minute about what concussion really 
is because it's not just that like you, you know, you have an injury to your brain. There's a whole cascade of biochemical effects that happen after a concussion that give us these symptoms of fatigue and mood issues. Can you talk about those? Yeah. Yeah. So the thing that confuses doctors <laughs> is that um, concussion is relatively invisible. Like you can't go draw blood and see that you had a concussion. You right. can't get a CT or an MRI. Like by definition, there's nothing on imaging that shows you have a concussion. Okay. Um, so it's purely this like physical exam symptom diagnosis. And so okay. what happens in concussion is that, like we were saying, it's soft, uh, kind of buttery. So when okay. you hit those 70 to 120 Gs and your brain kind of jostles, the neurons, so your brain cells kind of, they stretch but not enough to break. So they okay. stretch but not enough to die. And electrolytes go everywhere. They just go crazy because they leak. They kind of go out of holes, and so they go everywhere. They go where they want to go. But our body's trying to not, you know, like let them. It's trying to maintain that electrolyte balance. Right. And that causes this massive flood of glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter. Right. And so for that second, you get jostled, stretch, electrolytes go everywhere, glutamate spills, calcium is flooding your mitochondria. All these words you probably haven't heard since you know, high school biology, but. <laughs> All of that happens, and that's when you feel kind of oh, dazed. You're like, oh, that that was weird, or your ears start ringing, or you know, like that's that excitotoxicity. Is your brain is kind of scrambling; it doesn't know what's happening. Okay. And the the cascade, the, the thing you were talking about, the neurometabolic cascade of concussion, is that all of that happens, and it's not quick to fix. So what we see is that it takes a lot of energy. It takes your brain on a normal given day takes up 30% of your energy anyways. And now you just moved a whole bunch of stuff places it shouldn't have gone. Okay. And your brain's trying to scramble to put that all back together. And so for the first two to three days, if your brain energy levels are at 100%, by three days they're like, and they okay. dip to like close to 60%. And what that feels like is, so you take a concussion, you take a hit, right? You're in a car accident, you fall. And you're like, ooh, that feels weird. I kind of got a headache and I feel right. And I kind of rest a little bit. And then for the next three to five days, you're like, I feel like shit. Like, this is just getting worse. Um, and then after that, normally, you should kind of, symptoms should kind of go away within seven to 10 days. Okay. And the thing that's confusing and the thing that I want patients to know is that because symptoms go away, it doesn't mean your brain actually recovered. Okay. So that energy deficit, that dip, peaks within three to five days but it doesn't return to normal until like 21 to 30 days if there's no intervention okay. so <laughs> so you you take a hit some people feel better in like five days they take a hit they feel really crappy for a couple days and then by the end of the week like say as a hockey player as my own i took a hit on a game on friday i felt happy throughout the weekend i couldn't really sleep i had headaches i thought i was just dehydrated Monday, Tuesday, I start to feel better. I'm already back in practice. <laughs> and then next Friday, I'm playing again. That, my brain isn't back up to its normal energy level. Symptom resolution doesn't equal metabolic resolution. Okay. So that's, a, that's just kind of an important point to note. Like, just because you feel better, still get checked out. <laughs> right. reaction, reaction time is one of the things we measure as a baseline. It can right. take up to 60 days for that to recover. And so, so that's one of the things that we can test. It's like, hey, dude, you actually didn't recover. <laughs> uh, and so we want to we want to make sure that not not to be like hypochondriacs and not to like right. make you anxious, but we want to make sure that your brain is humming on all right. cylinders. Right. Because I don't know if this is too early to jump into this, but if you take a second hit, so if your energy level is down here and you take a second hit. It's not counting from up here, it's counting from here. So then you actually risk second impact syndrome or actual damage in a longer recovery. Like you're guaranteeing a longer delayed recovery by, by coming back too soon. So guys, if you're like a high performer and you are somebody who hates to hear that you have to rest, <laughs> hopefully this makes sense, right? Because like you'll feel better maybe by day three, day five, even day seven. But a good doctor is going to have you on a plan that is really going to give you support through at least 21 days, probably yeah. more, and who's going to be checking in with you regularly to make sure that you're doing all the cool stuff that Dr. Mark is going to talk to us about in terms of keeping your brain adequately fueled. Because Dr. Mark, I loved what you said 
Um, so you actually, you talk about post-concussive syndrome, right? Because it's something that we know of in the medical field, but you actually have another name for it. Yeah, and I won't, I won't take credit for it. I heard it in, uh, I forget which article it was. But in, there's a study, there's a group of researchers that are trying to say, hey, we shouldn't call it post-concussion syndrome. We should call it persistent inflammatory or persistent neuroinflammatory syndrome. Um, yeah. And it's basically that there's this cascade of inflammation that just right. didn't stop after the concussion. And you, that's what's contributing to your symptoms months to years, to years later. <laughs> okay. If you don't get treatment, guys. So don't, don't feel hopeless because this is the thing. When we have a name for something and we can understand it, and now, you know, we're kind of understanding why there's so much inflammation and concussion. There are interventions that you can use to address that inflammation. So, Dr. Mark, you do so much cool stuff in your clinic. Can we start with talking about, like, some of the ways that you address this neuroinflammatory cascade to help people feel better? Yeah. Um, so I want to say this one first for the athletes and for the high performers. Um, one of the first things that we do, so if you had a concussion, 72 hours later, we're throwing you on a treadmill and we're finding your exercise threshold. Um, because we we don't want you just resting until symptoms go away. And the way that I talk about that is like, if you broke your arm and threw it in a cast, you're resting, right? And then if you take that off and you just rest until your arm gets stronger, your arm is never going to get stronger, <laughs> right? right. So, right. so if we jostle the brain, yeah, we want to give it that acute 24 to 48 hours of just really symptom limited activity. Like you can walk the dog as long as it doesn't make your headaches work. worse. But in that 72 hours, you know, like three, four days after, we're going to put you on a treadmill because part of the inflammation is that after a concussion, your blood flow to your brain drops by almost 50%. And so when your brain needs all that energy to put all the molecules back in their place, it doesn't even have the blood flow <laughs> to do so. And one of the fastest ways that we can get that blood flow back, one of the fastest ways we can help you sleep better and help you just overall feel better. In, a, in an acute concussion, it's a matter of like, we can do this in like 10 days. Um, and that's just getting you onto a symptom, a sub-symptom threshold exercise program. Okay. So finding the threshold where your symptoms would kind of flare and saying, you know what, we're going to do about 80% of that, and okay. then we're going to test you again next week and see if we can not push that bar a little bit. So the, the again, doctor, like, you know, oh, go for it. Yeah. No, just guys, do this with the doctor. <laughs> so I'm yeah. saying, like, <laughs> yeah. don't just go out and run um, by yourself. Like, find somebody who knows what they're doing to help you figure out this threshold because it can get tricky. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but the foundation of any good concussion protocol is going to be symptom sub symptom exercise like okay. building that autonomic component because the sooner you can restore blood flow and the sooner you can restore kind of normal parasympathetic sympathetic balance yeah. the better you're going to sleep which is better recovery and the better you're going to be able to move nutrients right like you can eat a perfect diet and you can take all the supplements but if the blood isn't getting anywhere then what's the point <laughs> right perfect Okay, so exercise is a big component. What are some of the other things that you feel like you do? Because you, you've got so many different, like so many types of training from so many different modalities, right? Like nutrition, neurology, natural medicine, physical medicine. So what are the other kind of pillars of your approach? So I talk about nutrition, movement, mindset, <laughs> kind of on my website. That's like on the banner of my website. So the movement is kind of covered. So like if we were to take like a bird's eye view, so it's always sub-symptom threshold right. uh, aerobic exercise. And then within that movement category, we'll also build in visual vestibular rehab. So like vision training and making sure the eyes and the vestibular system track up with what your body is feeling. Right. Uh, from a nutritional standpoint, so there's three big things that happen in concussion, right? You've got the inflammation and the energy deficit, so that like excitotoxicity. So you've got the energy issue you got like a functional stretching of the neurons. Um, and then you've got to deal with, oh uh, God, I just lost the flow. Cause there's like five ways to do it, but I had I put it into three, but it's basically like you're dealing with the energy deficit, you're dealing with the inflammation and you're dealing with this functional damage. And so the nutrition is then kind of built around the supplementation is built around, Hey, let's get you easy energy because you don't have a normal blood flow. Let's get you really easy energy that doesn't require a ton of oxygen in the biochemistry. Um, let's support the neuron structure. Yeah, as simple as omega-3 fatty acids. Like, let's just support neuron structure. 
and then let's modulate that inflammation so that we're not suppressing a healing process, but we're not allowing it to go crazy. <laughs> okay. okay, gotcha. So you talked about easy energy. So for some people, they're probably thinking like, so I eat food, my brain gets energy. It's as simple yeah. as that. It, there's some pretty targeted nutrients that you focus on in your clinic when it comes to giving people energy after a concussion. Yeah, yeah. So after a concussion, uh, this will kind of make the keto folks happy because I know there's like a keto tribe. Um, <laughs> but so after after a concussion, your brain is scrambling to like there's this energy deficit. It's scrambling to put things back into place, and and one of the ways that it does that is through oxidative, like oxygen using metabolism. Okay. And so then when you try to when you try to fuel it with more oxygen requiring nutrients like carbs or like you know just standard fats, right. it's kind of harder for the brain to use. It needs to use all those same enzymes that it's trying to use to repair itself. Okay. So we'll skip we'll skip steps with therapy. And so two of my favorite two of my favorite kind of categories are would be creatine um, and exogenous ketones. Okay. And so creatine is one step. It's like creatine phosphate energy. <laughs> it's one step. Like, there's no oxygen. It just boom, people feel oh, good. Um, and then ketones are things like beta hydroxybutyrate. It's kind of a BHB yeah. is one of the big ones. But uh, it's just quick energy that doesn't require the same pathways. Um, and one of the cool things is that following TBI, at least in the severe TBI, for whatever reason, <laughs> uh, it could be that your brain is prepared for an energy deficit. You'll upregulate. Uh, transporters for ketones in your brain after a TBI. That's so awesome. it's, almost, it's almost like your brain is ready to use the ketones. Right. Um, so we'll supplement with exogenous ketones. We'll supplement with creatine. Uh, we'll supplement with MCT oils, things like okay. that. Just, just easy, quick energy for the brain. So I know you mentioned the keto tribe. So I want to take a minute here and talk about keto for a second. Um, and, because there's a, a really healthy way to do keto, and then there's a way to do keto that could actually exacerbate inflammation. So can you, yeah, walk us through maybe, like, how to do keto right? <laughs> yeah, so so keto, so ultimately it comes from being low carb. So if you're, like, macro counting, it's like your carbs are 5% or less of your diet. It's very heavy in fats, and it's kind of moderate in proteins. Right. And... The way people will do that is like, oh, cool, I can throw cheese on my bacon and put it in my milk with buttered coffee. You know, it's like, okay. no, <laughs> no, we want to we wanna still be heavy in, like, leafy greens, not starchy vegetables. We want to be, you know, like, good, moderate servings of lean, healthy proteins. And then choose healthy fats, not, like, your greases, but, like, your nuts, your seeds, your avocados. You right. can use butters, um, right. coconut oil, things like that. Uh, what I will say for concussion folks, uh, with a diet, ketogenic is, it's, it's hard. I don't want to deter people away from it, but it's hard. Like it takes planning. You got to prepare. It's socially, for the most part, it's kind of socially inconvenient. Yeah. So what I will recommend and what there's probably a little bit more research for there's, first of all, there's no diet for concussion. We think like Mediterranean diet, cardiovascular disease, ketogenic diet, epilepsy, like there's no like diet concussion. Um, right. So what I recommend most people do is move as close as they can towards a plant-based Mediterranean diet. And that's kind of opposite of keto. <laughs> but the idea is that what we see in concussion is if you can restrict calories, even just a little bit, that caloric restriction helps with autophagy, helps clear the brain, helps kind of promote recovery. So what I'll tell people to do Again, this is guided, so, so see a doc before doing this, but I'll tell people to move as close as they can towards a Mediterranean plant-based diet with time-restricted feeding, so with an intermittent okay. fast. So okay. I'll be like, yeah, I want you to skip breakfast so you can hit ketosis, you get the ketogenic benefits, right. but you're not on this socially restrictive diet. You're just okay. eating lots of plants, fruits, veggies, and proteins, nuts, seeds, whatever. Love so you can, for the most part, you can keep with just your normal healthy diet, but we skip breakfast, so we get the ketogenic benefits, the, the intermittent fasting benefits, but we stay on a sane diet. <laughs> you get the best of both worlds, guys. Yeah. Like, do it, yeah, cheat. Like, act the keto diet yeah. <laughs> if you're going to have yeah. to do it. Well, yeah. I, I, well, and, then if, and then if they need the extra ketones, we're like, hey, take this powder, yeah. you know. You know like, okay. It's easy. <laughs> well, and I, I think 
people forget that plants we hear all the time eat your fried fruits and veggies plants are medicine and like yes but it's it's based in biochemistry because when you're eating meats and oils like they can be really great for you right they've got tons of amino acids really healthy fat but they don't have the antioxidants the polyphenols the anthocyanins which are your body's major way of dealing with oxidation and inflammation and that's what's part of what's going on in concussion so you need and they also have a ton of vitamins and minerals yeah. so if you're missing those in your keto diet and you're trying to heal your brain it's going <laughs> It's tough, like, you know, so you might as well do it the healthiest way possible, the easiest way possible, and I love Dr. Mark, because that's what you have people do in the clinic, because it's like, yeah. the best of all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about, you mentioned a while ago, um, like, you do visual training in the clinic, and yeah. you talked to me a little bit about how much of our brains are dedicated to vision, and why you use the eyes in therapy, so can you explain that to people? Yeah, so, so if you're an athlete or you're a performer, 80% uh, of your input from the sport is visual. <laughs> so that's, that's huge. Um, and then when you look at how we function, like how I'm sitting here as a human and all this other stuff, more than 50% of the known pathways in the brain are devoted to vision and eye movements. So vision kind of touches almost every corner of the brain. And so if you think about that, if something is detected wrong out here, Right. You can trace it back to what's going on in here. So okay. it's not just you have a concussion, you have headaches. It's you have a concussion, you have headaches, and here's a region of your brain that's firing a little too much or not enough, and we need to balance that, and your headaches will probably go. Away. So we can yeah. it, it allows us to tailor that treatment. Wow. So how do you figure that out? So <laughs> basic, simple, simple neurologic exam. So like cranial nerves, yada, yada, yada. But what we'll do is we'll look at, uh, how well can you fix it on a target? So, like, if you're if you're an athlete, how well can you see the ball and can your eyes stay on the ball? Cool. If the ball is moving, can you pursue it side to side? Cool. Can you jump between targets with right. your eyes? And we're not only looking at can you do that, but we're looking at. So I've got a human right here um, where we can actually track. Let's see if you can see it. So this device here actually tracks eye movement, so we can we can graph your progress. But, so we're not looking at just can you do it, we're looking at how accurately can you do it. So when you're following a dog from side to side, like I had a guy just left, uh, left eye stays on target, right eye dips. So it literally makes almost like a V pattern. So he's got something pulling his eyes down, he's also falling backwards when he closes his eyes. There's, there's a pattern to <laughs> yeah. being able to move his visual, vestibular, and proprioceptive. And we can see kind of where those converge by looking at how the eyes are doing with pursuits, saccades, different reflexes. And by looking at all those and kind of layering them together with your normal reflexes, your normal, you know, posture and gait and, and muscle strength and stuff like that, we can kind of triage like, oh, hey, you're a little bit weak on this side. This reflex kind of spills over here. You right. can't turn in a chair to the left without getting dizzy. It's probably this area of your brain. Wow. We're going to rehab that. So, guys, that's pretty amazing. So, like, from your symptoms and from looking at your eye movements, uh, a doctor who's using this type of technology can actually focus in on the part of your brain that still needs attention, right? Because like, it's not like your whole brain heals completely evenly at once, particularly if you have compromised blood flow after a concussion. And that means certain parts of your brain might need more rehab than others. And so this is a way to tell, which to me would make it seem like your recovery could be way more targeted and way more efficient. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking at, so like if you think about that 21 to 30 day metabolic recovery, right. when we're supporting, so one of the ways we clear people is we, we do a buffalo concussion treadmill test, so we, we it's a walking test, you're not like sprinting, but <laughs> but you we're walking at an incline, incline, incline until your symptoms flare or until you max out, so until you reach your estimated max heart rate, or you're like, dude, I can't go any harder and my symptoms aren't getting worse, can I just hop off the treadmill? Right. <laughs> um, but so what we do is we use different tests like that, neurocognitive tests, vision tracking, to say like, yeah, you're probably cleared. And what we see is when we do these tailored therapies, it's not 21 to 30 days, it's 18 to 23 days. Or it's, you know, like we're, we're using supplements, we're using movement, nutrition mindset, we're using this kind of multimodal treatment plan, and your recovery is faster. So it's, we're not waiting the 30 days for the metabolic recovery because it's happening. 
you know, and we're able to we're able to track that objectively. Like we're able to push you. You're, you're like, hey, you had headache, you were dizzy before when you did this. Now you're able to run on the treadmill. We're able to provoke you after that when you're fatigued and you're still not getting headaches. You're probably recovered. <laughs> okay, awesome. So you're really like measuring in a in a very pointed way. Yeah. And I guess if I was sitting here and like. I had a concussion a couple years ago, and maybe I went to my primary care, and I didn't really get special treatment, and now I'm sitting here, and I've got insomnia, and, like, I get headaches after I focus, even though my vision is, like, technically okay when I go get my eyes checked, I'd feel like, oh, no, I missed out. So, can we talk to those people for a second about, like, are there things that they can still do? Yes. So, there are about <laughs> five, five buckets that we put post-concussion into, right? So there, there's five kind of categories that we look at to say, why are you still stuck? And okay. so there's autonomic or physiologic, right? So autonomic, something got stuck where sympathetic was probably too high. So your fight or flight, fast heart rate, anxiety, poor sleep, that got stuck too high and parasympathetic could kick back up to balance out. So okay. there's like physiologic autonomic component. There's a nutritional, metabolic, hormonal component. Um, so something in that cascade so what we see probably for the persistence of the, the neurometabolic inflammation within minutes to hours i think most research kind of agrees within three to eight hours after a concussion blood brain barrier gets leaky and so does the gut and so when the gut gets leaky within hours all of a sudden you've got food slipping in molecules slipping in that are triggering inflammation that inflammation makes its way up to the brain which makes it way down to the gut to the brain to the gut to the brain to the gut and so you got this persistent inflammation. So that's kind of that nutritional metabolic. Okay. The other issue, I don't do a ton of it in my practice, I refer out, uh, but hormonal. So we see growth hormone, we see testosterone, we see certain hormones because the pituitary gland sits right there in your scope. When that gets jostled, the most common one is growth hormone, but we'll see testosterone plummet, we'll see growth hormone plummet. We'll see kind of pituitary hormone issues after a concussion that can be something like, hey, you just got to get your hormones checked and balanced, and that's that's cool. That was it. Um, so the first two, yeah, so physiologic, autonomic, uh, you've got the nutritional, metabolic. Uh, there's visual vestibular, so making sure that your eyes are actually perceiving the world appropriately. One of the examples that I give is, like, when we look at saccades, a saccade is a fast jumping eye movement, and we'll look for if it's metric. So did you move from a target to the target cleanly, or did you kind of overshoot and have to correct? Did you undershoot and have to correct? And if you're doing this every time you read, every time you look at a sign, every time you look at someone's face, that's draining energy. And so even if it's not fatigue, that could be the energy to not have anxiety. That could be the energy to not have a headache. That could be the energy to not feel dizzy, you know? So visual vestibular influences are huge. So balancing that. The next would be cervical. So like we were saying earlier, it's like the force needed to have a concussion is around 70 to 120 Gs. If you don't address the whiplash and you don't address the, the cervical musculature, there's a good chance that's, that's, that is what's contributing to your headache. So that's what's contributing to your dizziness. So that's what's contributing to your brain fog is literally you just need some, some muscles released and some bones kind of realigned in here right. uh, and, and you're good. And then the last kind of piece, so you got physiologic, nutritional, metabolic, visual vestibular, cervical. The last kind of piece is psychologic. Um, and it's not to say that it's in your head. It's like it's, it's not in your head. Right. Um, but if you're someone who, and this is not shaming at all, like I deal with anxiety, everyone in America is probably dealing with anxiety right now. If you had anxiety before your concussion, it's a good predictor of a delayed recovery after your concussion, and it can kind of be the catalyst for staying there, right? Okay. So anxiety, depression are known to be contributors to insomnia and concussion. Anxiety, depression are known to be uh, contributors to, you know, like whatever. But we know that if, we, if we've if addressed everything else and you're still kind of stuck there, there's right. literally zero shame in seeing a counselor and seeing a psychologist and seeing someone who can help you with your mental health as well as kind of that physical health of concussion, even though it's all your brain. Um, yep. The psychological component is a huge barrier for a lot of people. Right. Okay, wow. So you kind of need a doctor who, if you're stuck, is gonna look at everything, your hormones, the way that your neck muscles are working, your thought life, um, the inflammation in your body, the way that your gut works. So 
if guys, if you're sitting here and, and one of those things hasn't been checked out for you, um, go talk to Dr. Mark. So Dr. Mark has an option to, to meet with him in 15 minutes and he'll chat with you about your case and tell you if he thinks he can help. So you're in Arizona, yep. correct? But you have an online practice, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Dr. Mark can talk to you. And, and I think we're both similar in that when people call us, and we chat with them, we're, we're already on their team, right? It's like, you That's know, like, <laughs> yeah, like we want the best for you. So if we, if he can get you the best help, great. If he thinks you need to go see somebody different, he's going to refer you. So take advantage of the fact that you have him on your team already and just give him a call if you're feeling like, yeah, like, okay, maybe one of these things could be part of my picture and I just haven't gotten it checked yet. Um, that's amazing. So, and if you guys missed it, there, there are parts of your brain that are responsible for telling the rest of your organs in your body to produce hormones. And I think most people don't know that. Um, so I just want to hammer that home. Like it's not just, you know, like your testosterone production starts in your brain. Same thing with your estrogen and progesterone. And none of this is your fault. And it all, you need help to fix all of it and you deserve help to fix all of it and you will feel better. So that's kind of what I wanted to end with is I feel like it's so powerful for me. Um, and I, I hope like we can maybe spend 30 seconds and you chat about this. Like it's my impression that people come see you after they've tried everything else. And I just want to ask you, like, do you see them get better? Yes. And yes. Yeah. So I see people who they're like, I've been to Mayo Clinic, I've been to Barrow's Neurology, I've been to this, I've been to this. Um, yeah. And it's literally just that one little piece where it's like, they think I'm a genius. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not super smart guy. It's just like, we looked at the right thing. We took a broad approach. And so, yeah, so we get people that they were kind of stuck in this one part. And it was such a simple fix looking at it from a, from a big picture, but they feel great. You know, it's like uh, the woman who tripped on her cat. Uh, she can walk. So sitting, the first time she sat in my office, she she would literally just kind of like grab because she thought she was falling. She would just freak out. Um, she's walking. She's driving. She doesn't, you know, like, it's so cool. And it was so simple, <laughs> the intervention. Um, yeah, so, so we, can see, we can see big changes. I love it. So, guys, go over to Dr. Mark's website and subscribe to his newsletter because – He's got a course coming out sometime in the next year where he's going to go really in-depth into everything that we just covered, and it's going to give you a really good platform wherever you are in the world or the country to start working on your own rehabilitation program. Um, so do that first just so you know when the course comes out, but also if you're struggling, go schedule a consult with him and just chat about your case. Like, there's hope. You can totally feel better. And there are so many more things that we couldn't even cover, probably a, a third of the things that you try, that you use in your clinic. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. And everyone's waving right now. I don't know if you can see it, but, no. yeah, yeah, it was thank awesome. You. Yeah, yeah. And let's do this again sometime. Yeah, it yeah. was really valuable. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon.